we're going to look at a bomb proof portfolio where pretty much anything can happen in the outside world and your portfolio will deliver a positive return over a three or maybe five year period. We're going to look at some wealth preservation funds and then some alternatives as well that might be useful. The inspiration comes from a Rate Mike portfolio article in the Daily Telegraph. It is a bit old now, but I did feel that their selections were, quite frankly, a bit awful. So at the top, they've got some of the wealth preservation investment trusts, which can invest in bonds. They could be government bonds, corporate bonds, index linked bonds, can invest in value equities and also in commodities. And they can put this together in a combination such that they feel they can deliver a positive return over most 12 month periods. But the problem has been for these funds is that when inflation has reared its ugly head and risen quite strongly, then the bond returns have gone negative and that's what's dragged down the performance of these funds. So here's personal assets where Killick recommend you have a 15% holding. Now, it's not gone down by that much actually, but it has gone down over quite a sustained period of time. And then the problem is that because it doesn't grow much when markets are more favorable, it could take quite a long time in getting back your money. So here are the holdings of personal assets and the fees are about 0.73%. So it's quite a lot of money for a concentrated fund. And then the problem is that because it's actively managed, you've got this manager risk. So you can't put all of your short term needs into this fund just in case the manager makes some wrong decisions and then you're a bit stuck. The capital gearing is very similar to personal assets. So the next up on our list is 24 income, where the recommended holding is 10 percent of £120,000 portfolio. 24 income targets a dividend of six pence a year and if that target isn't met then the company faces a continuation vote which is quite an interesting provision to have the current dividend is around about eight pence so you're on pretty much an eight percent yield which is pretty good although the capital returns are negative and you kind of have to work out what you're going to do with this income that you get because it can be a bit of a fat trying to reinvest 8% of £12,000 every year if you don't happen to need that as your pocket money. So we're now on to hypnosis songs which is where diversification can go a bit wrong and where you think something like music streaming should be relatively safe, relatively easy to understand, actually just becomes a bit of a mess. Then below that, we've got RIT Capital Partners, which is a multi-asset fund. And interesting enough, Fidelity say that the fund is such poor value that they won't allow any new investment into it on their platform. So that's one where the things like the private equity component has gone wrong and it's had rather bad returns over the last few months. If we look at 3i Infrastructure, this is a highly regarded investment trust the dividend yield is quite low, but the total returns, including the forever rising net asset value, have been pretty good and they do seem to be fairly stable. So perhaps out of all the infrastructure funds, this is maybe one to consider. But be careful because often it can trade on quite a large premium to net asset value. And you certainly don't want to be investing if you're paying a premium. The rest of the portfolio, Killick recommend investment trusts and particularly some of the dividend hero investment trusts, such as City of London, which has the ticker CTY. Such an investment trust has quite low fees and what it invests in is very easy to understand, unlike the investments of something like Caledonian. Uh, now, the most of the return here will come from the dividend yield, but because it's a dividend hero, you're pretty much certain that the dividends will be at least maintained during even the worst economic conditions. So I think that this is something that is a good store of value. It's something that's worth having in your portfolio if you're looking to potentially access the money within a three to five year time frame. 
Charles Stanley, the brokers also provide some advice and they say that sometimes it's better off to be in cash or some kind of money market fund and even if you don't beat inflation at least you're not exposed to a major stock market crash and you do understand where your money is invested. However, they do go on to give some advice around specific places to invest. They mention again some value orientated investment trusts such as Murray International, which is quite a good bet because being more globally diversified than the City of London, you've got the prospects of maybe higher capital returns over a three to five year period. He then goes on to mention a global quality dividend exchange traded fund. He picks the one from Fidelity. I prefer the Wisdom Tree one, the GGRG, which as you can see, has a better performance over the last five years. And the advantage of these ETFs is that, well, first of all, you understand what they're invested in, some pretty solid companies, and then the filters that they apply, firstly, in terms of quality, then in terms of dividend payments, pretty much mean that even in a market downturn, the shares that you hold are quite sought after by investors and you are unlikely to lose money over a five year period. Although because these ETFs haven't been around for very long, we can't really prove that in the future where market crashes are, they're never the same. So you get one that's based around banks in the global financial crisis, one that's based around high oil prices, one that's based around overvalued technology. So you can never really be sure what's going to happen in the future. But I do really like these exchange traded funds because I think they offer the opportunity for low volatility capital growth. I've done a video on Wisdom Tree global quality dividend growth and I'll put a link to that in the description. But here's an example of the top 10 holdings of the Fidelity Quality Income Fund and you can see some pretty stonking names there and it's pretty well diversified, 253 holdings. So you kind of know what you're investing in and you're getting pretty much the best companies in the world and if they can't make any money then no one can. So Rob Morgan at Charles Stanley then goes on to really block his copybook and make a bit of a hash of everything. He talks about the iShares UK dividend ETF, which has horrible capital growth. It has unstable dividends over time. And I don't really rate it very highly. He talks about some investment trusts such as Mercantile, uh, which are probably very reasonable. Then he goes on to say, well, you can invest in property investment trusts. Now, the problem with these are that property tends to be in a recession at the same time that the stock market is in a decline. So really, they offer absolutely no downside protection whatsoever. And if you invest in the wrong sorts of property, you're in shops and offices and all kinds of really naff locations that only tramps go to. So seeing as we are not tramps, but we do want a bomb proof portfolio, we're going to move swiftly on. So my conclusion is that you need to make a plan and stick to it for the three to five year duration. And in order to do that, you need to understand exactly what you are investing in, exactly what you are exposed to in terms of interest rates, inflation, um, maybe exchange rates all those kinds of things. So the sorts of investments you could look at would be the Investment Trust Dividend Heroes. There may be a very few select asset best investments at a discount to net asset value. As we saw with 3i, you just got to look at, see which ones have performed quite well over the last couple of years, and then those will be the best ones to consider. You can look at money it market funds, you can look at a global quality income ETF, such as the one from Wisdom Tree, and you can look at short duration UK government bonds, where you pretty much know what the returns are going to be. So if you want a sounding board in helping to put together a portfolio, it could be for your short term investment requirements or even longer term and legacy investment requirements, you can go to my website www.ianshadrack.com and next up, I recommend you watch this video on the Wisdom Tree Global Quality Dividend Growth ETF.